Welcome to the Inspiration for an Empowered Life podcast, sponsored by the Image Designers. They will help you look prosperous, feel prosperous, and be prosperous. Now, here's your host, the Image Master, Holly Porter. Hello and welcome listeners. We're here for another episode of our podcast with another special guest with me today from California and her name is Venus Ramos. Did I say that right? Very, very close. Ramos. Ramos. Oh, <laughs> oh okay. And I'm going to read a little bio about you and then we'll chat a little more about what you do. So she, I should have said doctor, and I apologize, I did not, because it was not written that way here. Um, she is a doctor, and she's a licensed physician in the specialty of physical medicine and rehabilitation. She received her medical training at Yale University, University of Miami, and University of California, Irvine. She has a thriving medical practice in Southern California, and she has competed for 20 years as a national level fitness athlete. Oh, I'm so jealous. A respected fitness, tra fitness trainer, her clients have ranged from single moms to professional athletes and even an action film star, Dr. Ramo Mos Ramos? Ramos, Ramos, oh my gosh, um, has been a repeat guest expert on the TV series The Doctors and was featured on several other shows, including NBC's American Gladiators and ABC The Bachelor Paris. She also contributes to multiple health outlet outlets and has been published in Oxygen Magazine. So welcome to our show today. Thank you very much. I'm very, very happy to be here. That's a lot of fun stuff. So I <laughs> want to know, first of all, like, why do you do what you do? Oh, um, just being in health and fitness has been just, uh, just kind of a journey for me and everything has just kind of come along in, on my path. Of course, I'm one of those people who be, decided to become a doctor, I don't even know when. I think I fell down on the playground in preschool and <laughs> someone slapped a Band-Aid on my knee and boom, I wanted to be a doctor. I can uh, do that. <laughs> <laughs> so basically, just all my life, I knew I wanted to be a doctor. Going through high school, I knew I needed to get the right grades and, and do the right uh, community service and get in all the right clubs to get into medical school and it was all about uh, just getting into medical school and then once I was there I really learned a lot more about what it actually takes to be a doctor um, and that's actually when I kind of developed uh, my love of fitness because uh -huh. it just so happened that I was out um, I went to the University of Miami specifically for medical school and I was out on South Beach with friends from medical school. We happened to be sitting in a sports bar and on television on ESPN comes the Fitness America competition and someone jokingly said, I dare you to try that. Get up on that stage and try that. I said, fine. <laughs> I had absolutely no experience. I'm not a gymnast. I'm not a dancer. I had no training in that regard. But I said, why not? Just go out there and, and give it a go. It looked like fun. So I, I entered my first fitness competition the very next year. And that's kind of when the whole uh, idea of combining health and fitness as a hobby, as a career, um, basically as my world came about. Oh, wow. So what was your favorite part about doing that? Oh, fitness competition specifically, it was just a whole new thrill. It was a whole big televised event. Um, I got to go out on stage and really present myself in a different manner. I've been presenting myself as an intellectual. I'm always challenging my mind, so to speak. Uh, very, very challenging medical school is, if no one has ever yeah. mentioned that before. <laughs> but, Not um, yourself. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, challenge myself physically was, was something uh, very, very different. Of course, I had played um, recreational sports as a child I, or even high school. What am I talking about? I, I played high school soccer. Um, so I did play in, and, and participate in sports. 
but going out there on my own individually and performing for a crowd and challenge my, challenging myself to do all of these things like that I had never tried before, like splits and splits. <laughs> I'm not a gymnast, uh, um, but I tried and I did it. Uh, tr- being able to do a one-arm push-up, I trained myself to, to first of all, be able to complete a two-hand push-up <laughs> oh. and then moving on to a one-arm push-up. So these are all things that were just physically challenging and it was great to be able to get up there on the stage and and show that, that you, that anyone could pretty much do anything as long as you put your mind to it. Oh, I agree. Well, so just hearing all the things that you've been, that you've challenged yourself. I mean, medical school in itself is a huge feat to, wow. I mean, I wanted to be a nurse when I was younger and then I went, I don't even like blood. Why would I want to be a nurse? <laughs> forget that, let's change careers. <laughs> You're not the first person who has told me that, that nursing got, kind of was a turnoff when they found out about the blood. <laughs> I know. And then I wanted to be a dental hygienist. It's like, I don't like mouths. <laughs> Just no, staring no. into mouths. <laughs> I know. And so, yeah. Uh, I, so, so discipline, like when you work with clients, I mean, is that one of your processes that you use is is some discipline? I mean, talk about that for a minute. Like, what do you use? Well, when I work with clients, I think it's really, really important um, to to look at the whole situation comprehensively. That's a little bit of why um, I think being a doctor actually helped a lot in terms of being a health coach. Um, In rehab medicine specifically, which is my specialty, we try to take a very comprehensive look at the patient in terms of um, any pain they may be having, um, mm-hmm. any of their uh, heart systems, lung systems, all of that. We take a look at that comprehensively. Then we also look at their, their psychology and their mindset, if they're gonna be able to participate in rehab or if, they're, if they have issues with depressed mood or anxiety. Uh, mm-hmm. We look at the family circle and the kind of support they have especially for those stroke patients, um, the the support that they're going to have when they go home. So we take a very comprehensive look at every patient. And that's exactly what I translate to when I I work with uh, fitness clients. Mm -hmm. I look very comprehensively at their entire situation. And I've found that there is a, a, um, there is a fitness mantra out there that a lot of trainers love to say, and I really, really think it's not a good idea, no excuses. I hear it all the time. No excuses. You just got to do it. No excuses. And that really doesn't work because every person's excuse is actually just part of their situation. Um, So you can't really just set aside an excuse and move on with your day and think you're going to accomplish everything. You really have to look at it um, you have to analyze it. Um, there's actually a three, three step process. I call it the three E's. You need to evaluate your excuse and then you educate yourself on it and then you can eliminate that excuse, but you really need to work with it. Basically my philosophy is not no excuse. It's embrace your excuse you need to totally embrace your excuse because that's basically who you are and what your situation is right now you know it reminds me if people that know me i say a lot you know my mantras you are enough and it and it reminds me a little bit of that because you are Mm -hmm. enough you know you your excuse is your excuse right and exactly i mean there's nothing wrong with having an excuse no, I, and I agree with you. I mean, I'm no fitness person. I agree with you though. I, I think that's so true. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So many people may have an issue with um, just time. They're way too busy. Yeah. And that's a perfectly legitimate excuse. We fill our lives with lots of things. So if time is an issue, then that's the first thing I sit down and we start addressing. Some people have low energy. They just feel too tired to get to the gym or they just feel too tired to make a a healthy meal. Well, then that's the first thing we need to address there. We need to look at what aspects of their lives we might be able to help boost their energy. It may be diet, it may be sleep, or it just may be your actual schedule that's draining you and what 
what are those unnecessary things we might be able to remove. So again, it's, yeah. it's a very comprehensive approach, one that actually takes into consideration what your excuses may have been up to this point and why you might not have achieved the goals that you are right. wanting to achieve. Yeah. And, and, you know, I've worked with a lot of people who have different coaches for different things and I can see like working with someone like you, like I do mindset work. Well, it might just be teaching them in their mind. I feel like there's time for everything. It's just where your priority is. And so mm -hmm. it's shifting those mind set, you know, skills that they need to shift so that they can figure out now to make a different change of what Absolutely. you're doing. So it's, yeah, it's amazing. Wow. How much things go together, but time is a lot time, time and money and energy. Those are probably the top three excuses we hear, right? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> so it's like, okay, let's get you past. I don't know now. about money management. I wouldn't be able to help you with that as, as far as a health coach goes. <laughs> I need to work on my own money management. <laughs> sure, but it's still a mindset. You it know? definitely is. Because there's always more of where that's coming from. So you just, that's, that's a shift. So we may have to work together. <laughs> um, well, so what, what advice can you give the listeners that can help empower them to take back like their healthy life right now? You have some advice? Well, I, I think that there's a few things that, that can be done. Um, first of all, take a look I, I mentioned this before, take a look at your sleep patterns. This is just one thing that you may be able to correct just right away and immediately feel an effect in terms of uh, boosting your energy level so you can do everything that you wanna be able to do, including uh, getting to the gym or, or yeah. doing that 20 or 30 minute exercise program at home. Um, when you're talking about sleep, there is non-REM sleep, which is your deep sleep, and then there's REM sleep, which is rapid eye movement. We may, you may have heard that before. Um, so your deep sleep, your non-REM sleep is the more restorative sleep. So that's when your body's really going to be able to regain uh, and refuel. So that actually occurs earlier in the evening. So you want to try to get to bed before midnight <laughs> and and hopefully even before 10 p.m. I hear 10, yeah. 10 p.m. Is, is actually the ideal time to get to bed because then those hours that you're getting to sleep before midnight feel like uh, twice the, that amount of hours if you were only to get them in, in the, at the two, three, four o'clock hours. So just try to shift that. You can still get all those things that you usually stay up late at night doing. You can get them done when you wake up early at four or five in the morning, but you're going to feel more restored and you'll actually be more productive. So that's one thing you can correct right there. Um, the, the number two thing, which is pretty easy to do as well, although in the beginning it might not be so easy, is just uh, get enough water <laughs> during the day. When you're dehydrated, you can definitely feel more fatigued. It's, it's a very easy to explain process. When you, have not, when you don't have enough water, your blood volume is actually decreased. And when your blood volume is decreased, your low energies are going to be low. So when your energy levels are low, um, how can you have a productive day? All you need to do in order to, to get the right amount of water, um, I, I say an easy figure in terms of figuring this out is to take your body weight in pounds. Mm -hmm. You divide that in half and... Uh, take that number and make that ounces of water. So if you're uh, 130 pounds, you want to drink at least 65 ounces of water. And that actually can be anywhere from half an ounce to a full ounce per pound of body weight. So mm -hmm. for a 130 pound person, that would be anywhere from a half a gallon to a full gallon of water a day. It's actually very individual because you may be sweating more during that day, the weather might be hot, or you might even be ill and you might have some nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, that stuff. So <laughs> you definitely need to, to drink more in that case. So it's a little individual, yeah. but anywhere from half an ounce to a full ounce of water per day is usually a good measure of drinking enough water. But the, the best measure that I have is just check, <laughs> check when you go to the bathroom. When you empty your bladder, if you pee clear, you're drinking enough water. 
So yeah. pee clear. That's the goal. Yeah, there you go. I know. I always wonder too, because I used to take so many vitamins that I had. Mine was never clear, no matter how much I drank, because I, I just was losing all my vitamins, you know? So yeah. Yeah, there's a balance in there too. <laughs> yeah. So those so, are just a couple of points. Yeah, no, I love that. That's awesome. Um, I'm curious, you, we had talked about something that you wanted to offer the listeners as well. You want to talk about that for a moment? Oh, absolutely. Um, I think that um, any advice that I give here is, is pretty general, but yeah. what I have is what I call a commit to fit kickstart package, and it's going to be more personal it, personalized advice. I'm actually going to give you a personalized fitness analysis. Then you'll also get a 30 day doctor designed workout program. And then you also get an ebook of mine, which is called the quick start guide to the Dr. Venus diet. So we kind of hit a little bit of all the aspects in terms of what you need to get the commit to fit kickstart that you're looking for. Oh, I love that. Okay. And so will you say it and then spell it? And then I'll also add the link at the sure. bottom. Uh, drvenus.com forward slash Holly Porter. So just go to D-O-C-T-O-R-V-E-N-U-S.com forward slash Holly, H-O-L-L-Y Porter, P-O-R-T-E-R. That is if I spelled your name right. <laughs> you did, yeah. I used to have, uh, when I first got into real estate, I had a commercial made for this country station and no lie, it was catchy. And that they, my name was in the Holly Porter. So every time I hear that, I always like, <laughs> in my mind. and I had the phone number 1877 by Holly. Oh, how fun. It was song. <laughs> oh my gosh. My kids were teenagers then and everybody was singing it at school and they were so embarrassed, but they were like, that was pretty good. <laughs> oh, wow. I'm going to have to come up with a jingle. <laughs> it was, it was off the radio for five or six years and people still thought they were hearing it. Oh my goodness. <laughs> yeah. That's kind of fun. Anyway. Yeah. Fun. Well, I love, I love anything about fitness um, and anything we could do that'll help our health. You know, I mean, we could talk about food. We could talk about so many things, but you know, the biggest thing I think is just to start somewhere. So the water was a great suggestion because, you know, I, I find that too, if I have a bottle of water by my bed at night, I remember, and if I wake up during the night, I'll drink, but mm -hmm. I remember I just down, you know, if I can draw down a bottle of water when I first wake up in the morning. That's exactly the, the one of the best tips is just have some water on your yeah. nightstand so you can just drink because most people are, are pretty thirsty actually when they first wake up. So yes. having it right there and going ahead and quenching that thirst is a great way to start your day. Oh, absolutely. So that was that great tip. I love that one. Um, some people just say, I don't like water. You know, I'm not a soda drinker, so it's easier for me to drink the water than have the soda because I'm not, I don't drink it. <laughs> I used to. Well, you can have a good mineral water. There's, there's some great ones out there. Um, or you, or you can even have some, some of the herbal teas. Um, though that's just a, that's also a great water source. So if yeah. you don't like just the taste of water, um, there's other options. You can definitely throw fruit in there as well. That's always a great option. Yeah. Just throw in some strawberries, some oranges, anything like that. Yeah, the infused. Um, I'm curious what your thoughts are real quick on coconut water. Well, I think coconut water is actually, um, it's, it's a great thing. Uh, there is absolutely nothing wrong with coconut water. Um, and using it for electrolyte replenishment uh -huh. also works just fine. I think there's a lot of people who feel that coconut water is even, um, is just better than water in every way. And that's not necessarily true. <laughs> yeah. So um, the one thing that I advise when it comes to drinking coconut water is to just make sure that you're getting its most natural, pure form um, these days. And I've been to a lot of conventions and conferences where coconut water has been sampled by many different brands. These days, there's so much stuff thrown into coconut water. It's yeah. not coconut water anymore. It's coconut juice. Sugar. Or all yeah. sorts of sugar in it. So exactly. really, really be careful about what you're, what you're drinking. And my best advice is just to try to get the 100% the, the pure coconut water. Because again, 
you can't go wrong with all natural. <laughs> right. Well, and I found if I need a little flavor, I add essential oil, like add some citrus or tangerine mm -hmm. or something to it. That's an oil that you know you're not going to get the sugar. Absolutely. And that it, helps. Drink there's more, just too. so many different ways to, to flavor your water or your yeah. coconut water um, so that it, it's, a, it's a more appealing to your sense of taste. Absolutely. So everybody drink more water. That's the drink, bottom line. Drink more water. Whatever you can do, drink more water without adding extra sugar. <laughs> Make sure your pee's clear. That's what I got out of it. <laughs> pee clear. Pee clear. Pee clear. Pee clear. <laughs> Not be clear. That's pee clear. <laughs> be very clear. Yes, exactly. You pee clear to be clear. There you yeah, go. <laughs> absolutely. I love that. <laughs> oh, well, thank you so much for joining us today. And we'll have Not to have you for another little update and see how you're doing and, and uh, maybe some more nutrition tips. That would be Oh, fun. that that would work out great. I would love to do that. Oh, thank you. My pleasure. And thank you all our listeners for listening today. We will see you on another podcast soon. Thank you. Have a great day. Thank you for listening to the Inspiration for an Empowered Life podcast sponsored by The Image Designers. They will help you look prosperous, feel prosperous, and be prosperous. You can learn more about them at theimagedesigners.com or email holly at hollyporter.com.